Okay, so today we're going to go through modding the Aerodynamic DT1990 to make them balanced. We'll also be doing a couple of other things. It's quite a big job, so we'll do it in two parts. First part, pull them apart. And the second part will be actually doing the modding and getting them back together. So let's get these out of the box. So the 1990 are a very popular headphone at the moment from Bear Dynamic. They are open back studio headphones. They're designed to be sort of a step above the, the 990, which they've been doing for many, many years. These ones have got the Tesla drivers in, which gives you, uh, they give you more detailed bass, I would say, like better bass quality and bass extension from these than you get from the 990s. And the overall is just a bit more controlled because the, the drivers are a bit more advanced. The actual build quality on these is lovely. Uh, so yeah, so you've got a metal cover over there, plastic ear cup, nice leather headband with embossed print. Overall, these are really nice. With most of the Bear Dynamics, like the DC 717 and 1990, the first thing we'd normally do is undo these and remove the ear cups. But on the 1990s particularly, uh, it's a very tight fit in here. I suspect they... Um, they freeze them before they put them in because the only way we can get them out is by doing the same thing. So we get these very cold and they pull them out. There's no actual need to remove the, the ear cups. It's probably easier just to remove the whole yoke from the headband and uh, that will give you enough access to, to mess around with things. So first of all we're going to remove the ear pads which is the same on most headphones. You kind of just um, hook your finger underneath and then remove it from the edge. Do the same on the other side. Um, next, I think we'll remove the headband. So on these, it is a T10 screw in here. Just undo that. There's two screws on each side, and then it should pretty much just come apart. So again, nice big chunky screws. You know, I see some pretty expensive headphones held together with much thinner screws that tend to kind of, um, uh, you tend to strip the thread on the plastics if you do that too tight, that kind of stuff. With a, with a big chunky screw like that, there's not a lot of chance of doing anything wrong, which is nice. So I'll just undo the other side. And again, Bear Dynamic is one of those companies that's very good about spare parts. So if you break something, you can just contact their spares department and they'll sell you whatever you need to to replace. There's a lot of headphone companies where they're a little bit touchy about their spares and they'll only um, they'll only do it if you if you send your headphones in and then they'll replace them for you. But yeah, Bear Dynamic and Sennheiser are both both very good about selling people spare parts. Um, right, so we've got the, the caps off the end and then the actual headband itself you can just pop pop out like that. So again, that's replaceable if you wear that out. The, the next stage is two little clips. Oh yeah, two little plastic clips just there. Just use a small flathead screwdriver or a spudger or something to pop those. They don't take much force. They'll pop nicely without you damaging them. And that's one ear cup off. Headband dismantled. What I'm going to do, just best practice whenever you're pulling stuff apart, is put the screws back where you found them. That way, when you come to reassemble anything, you never end up with leftover pieces. Having said that, whenever I seem to repair anything on my car, I always end up with bolts left over, so I should really uh, do that with, with other things as well as headphones. <laughs> just pop that in there. you don't need to tighten them up but it's just just super handy for keeping the screws together and reminding you where they went on some of these there's lots of different screws all different sizes and it's easy to forget okay so now we've got those done 
Next, we will pop the drivers out there, retained with this ring here. You can pull that off with the pad, like you can jam something down there, but there's a chance of damaging the pad, which is why I removed the pad before doing it. Another thing you'll notice while we're in here, which will help you when you're putting it back together, you've got a little cut out there. If you get the edge of the pad over that and twist, it'll automatically um, locate itself, which is uh, super handy. So I'm just going to use a small flat head screwdriver under there just to lever that up. And that pops off. And underneath, there's a little foam disc. And do the same on this one. Remove that. Um, next, which is the left? So this is the one with the socket in, so that will have more, more business going on inside. So I'm just going to tap like that, and the drive will come out. And on the 1990s and 1770s, the drivers are plugged in, it's, so you don't even need to unsolder anything if you're dismantling them, which is nice. Obviously, we're going to be soldering stuff in there. But um, so that comes out, that comes out. And away you go. So if you blew a driver, something like that, super easy to, to do. As you've seen, you, need, uh, you don't even need a T10 screwdriver because you just need to, I'm just doing this to give myself a bit more access. But essentially, a flat head screwdriver just to leave the stuff open. And um, that's all you need. Don't need a soldering iron or anything. You can replace the driver just by unplugging it. So it's a nice user serviceable design, which is good. Um, so another couple of bits to note on the design case you're interested so you can see there's a rubber ring here which presses on these little pegs here and gives the driver additional support from the rigidity of the ear cup which is nice which is uh, yeah a good bit of design there but the rubber ring basically stops it from rattling when it's moving so yeah I, I like that it's, um, it's got some good good features so one thing you'll notice when you open these up is on the outside you see all these slots and you think oh nicely open on the inside, it's actually only these holes that are open, and they're partially blocked by the grills. So it's not nearly as open as you might think. Uh, that, that's not totally uncommon. On I see that on, on quite a few headphones. It's just uh, it's just interesting. So when we when we mod these, we're going to add a little bit of damping material around here on these flat surfaces, just to stop stop some of the reflections on the inside. Right. So next, we're going to remove the headband cable. And there's a little stake here, which you want to lever up. So again, if you broke your headband cable, that pops out without any special tools or soldering. That's removed from there. And then we'll remove the, the socket. Now that's held in with hot glue. Just a couple of dabs here to stop it from coming unscrewed. You can heat that up, but I don't... I think there's any need to just give that, you know, just grip it firmly and twist, and that'll that'll break the the glue, and that'll open up. Uh, if you did want to remove the hinge the hinge pieces, once you've got that out, there's again just a little bit that you lift up, which locks this in place, and then they'll they'll pull out. But honestly, it's not worth it. They they are so much hassle to get in and out. Um, yeah, unless unless you need to, I wouldn't bother. Right, so that's that, and that is the Mini XLR socket there, which is a three pin as standard on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that to a four pin so that we can run these in balance with two with, with separate grounds for each of the drivers. Okay, so I've got that, so that one's all out, and then we're going to essentially rinse and repeat on the second one. Pop that, unplug it. You've only got one cable to unplug in this one. Done. And then remove the headband cable. Now then when we mod these we're going to replace the headband cable because we're going to wire it inside and out with our Litz wire, which is quite considerably thicker than the wire that you get there. These are very thin wires. Now then I know I know there's not a huge amount of power going through them, and it's probably perfectly fine. Um, but they're just 
just a bit thinner than I'd expect because that's, that's including the insulation, the actual wire inside is even thinner. So anyway, but we can replace that anyway while we're in there. And to get a nice neat job, <coughs> to get a nice neat job I'm going to try and reuse these grommets. Uh, these the the passage through is too thin to fit our our wire, but we're gonna. How long do I need that? Never actually measured one of these. That is about six. So it's about sixty centimeters in length. So that's the length of headband wire that I'll need to replace it. Uh, normally I just measure it up against this, but I'm gonna go through the next bit now. Uh, excuse the noise. <sighs> Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by removing this section off the top. So it just rem just leaves the, the little plug that's going to cover the hole. As you can see on here, it's quite a big hole there, and if we just had a wire going through, we'd then have to seal up the rest of it with glue or something. It wouldn't look that, that pretty, so we're going to try and reuse the same rubber grommet. Uh, right, so we've cut that off. Now what I'm going to try and do is pull the wire through. There we go. And then I'm going to use a scalpel just to just to clean out the, the bit of rubber that's left in there. Should hopefully give us a slightly bigger hole to work with. Neat, neaten up some of the edges. Right. Yes, never cut towards your own hand, children. Um, then, my handy T10 screwdriver, which I was using earlier, I'm going to jam that up its, up its orifice. <laughs> Just to widen it out a bit, because our wires are thick, boys. Um, Alright. And while I'm doing the rest of it, I'm going to leave that on there to kind of stretch a little bit. And then when we poke our wire through, it will shrink back down a little bit to its original size and grip it all tightly, which is good. So that's one of those done. Let's just do the other one. So again, I'm going to cut the end off. Pull the wire out. Lean up the hole. And wang it on my screwdriver. So I'm going to leave that on there, like the other one, to stretch out. So that's it for part one. We've got into it. We've dismantled it. We've prepped it, ready for rewiring. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make the cable. So I'm going to make the headband cable, make the balance cable, and then we will put this all back together. And yeah, so I will see you again in part two. Okay, so I've done the boring bit. I've uh, added some damping material all around here just to absorb some of the sound bouncing around inside the ear cup. And I have made uh, head uh, made the cables for it. So I've got a four pin mini XLR here. And then I've just made a, a wire that's going to go to one driver and then a longer wire that's going to go to the other driver covered in paracord. Now then, got a pro tip for you now Let's see where's my little so these these grommety do's these grommets I've got to get them over this paracord which is gonna be hard because of the fray edges there but um, this is what you want to do you want to get yourself some of this plumbers tape PTFE tape we use it for loads of stuff uh, really really hello Hello, sorry, I'm just filming at the moment, so I can't talk. Okay. 
Alright, bye. Uh, so that, uh, anyway, so what you want is some of this PTFE tape, plumber's tape. It's very thin, very strong, it's also electrically insulated and very slippery. This will help you get cables into places, which is good. So, I'm going to wrap it round quite tightly, so you're going to make that as thin as possible. Uh, this doesn't have any adhesive on it, so it doesn't need cleaning up afterwards. I'm just going beyond the paracord, up a little bit further, so I've got something to pull on when I get it through. Okay, so I just have to remember to do everything in the right order. Alright, so that goes through the ear cup and through the little screw on, I think the little nut. Pull that through. And then we want to go through the hole in the ear cup and then into the grommets. Okay, so let's get the first one on there. So I'm trying to do this relatively quickly because it's been stretching out on the screwdriver and it will return to its normal shape pretty soon. So there you go, you've got the got it through the initial bit. And if you pull on that, hopefully it should pull the power cord through. He says, messing it up. No, there we go. <sighs> One. I'll just reapply that. That's uh, torn. This comes in two thicknesses. You get um, a gas one and a normal plumbing one. The gas one's thicker, which is stronger. But obviously, because it's thicker, it it's not as easy to get through thin thin gaps so it's always that balancing act uh, we keep both here they're both good for different things and they're very cheap it's only like about a pound a reel and it will save you 10 pounds worth of time trying to poke things through small holes all right there's the other one okay, so someone wants to go that way around make sure you get these the right around There we go. Right, that's through. So then that can go into the other ear cup. Wherever that is. There we go. Right, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere now. Okay, so I'm going to put the socket in. Um, I didn't show the the making of the internal cables, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And if you're not sure how to solder a 4-pin Mini XLR. Um, probably shouldn't be messing around with <laughs> four £500 headphones potentially ruining them. So yeah, you know, you're going to need some basic soldering skills if you're going to do this kind of thing. I might do another video on that just because uh, obviously I've picked up some techniques and tips over the years. But that's not what this video is about. I'm just going to show the basics and assume you kind of vaguely know what you're doing. So I'm just going to get that tight in there, and then try and make sure it's straight. Oh, I got another one. It's always handy to have a mini XLR uh, nearby, so you can wiggle the socket because it's. I'll just grab one. Yeah, they've got enough wiggle room that you can get them slightly off centre. This one is not quite straight, so I'm just going to. Plug that in and straighten it up. There we go. So that's, that's pretty tight in there, like finger tights, alright. And then we're going to hit it up with the hot glue like it was originally. Covering wires. Okay, so I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue. Oh, oh no. Forgot to warm the glue gun up. Right, that's, that, the glue gun's on, I'm warming up, so hopefully by 
by the time that's warm all we can do all the gluing. Alright, I'm gonna get the grommets in place now. So I'm gonna slide it down. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room in here so that I can route the cable nicely. And then I'm just gonna try and get it to seat back in the original hole nicely. It's had enough time to kind of shrink down a bit. It should go in. I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver just to give it a bit of persuasion. It's always the way when you're filming, it's being awkward. There we go. Right, that's just about in. Good, and then you should be able to put that little metal stake back in as well to hold it all in place. There we go. That's back in. That's the squat. Okay. Um, so now I'm just going to lock the the nut in with a bit of hot glue and also glue down the cable just in case it tries to move around in there. Nice. Right, so that's that one redone. And hopefully the other way comes much the same. Yeah, I'm not totally sure you need to put those back in because they're, they're so tightly in there now I can't see them being pulled out, but can't hurt. Alright, so again I'm just going to run the cable around the edge and glue it in place. And I've probably left myself, well I have, I've left myself too much length on the wire this side, so I'm just going to cut that down a bit. Excessive amounts. And as you can see, that's a much thicker, much thicker wire because this is only silk, silk covering. So the actual conductor inside is quite, quite flat. Okay, I'm just going to heat up the soldering iron. Now we're going to do the delicate part, the bit where it can all go horribly wrong. Um, got to solder the drivers back in. Um, yeah, I'm just going to stop there because I've just remembered I've, we normally add a bit of weight to the back of these as well, so I'm just going to add that on there and then we'll uh, then we'll solder it all together. All right, okay. So the final part, this is where it can go horribly wrong. We're going to solder the drivers to the cables. If you're not 100% certain what you're doing, I would probably reuse the the connectors in there because very possible to damage these things if you if you solder them wrong. So underneath the sockets you'll see four solder pads. The centre two are connected to the voice, wo the voice coil wires, so be very careful not to touch those. You want to solder to the outside contacts on there. Uh, what I would recommend is just bending the wires like that so you come in from the sides. Uh, on the bare dynamic drivers, certainly on the, the Current 1990s, they've got a little dash next to one of the one of the sides, and that'll denote the negative or the positive, whichever you want to use it for. I think they normally uh, mark the negative side, but it is different on different drivers, as you can see on those two. They've got the negative on on different sides, and it'll vary from model to model. Crack on. <laughs> 
Uh, right, so I'm just going to solder this on. Uh, certainly with our wire, it's got no insulation on and it gets really, really hot. So if I swear because my fingers are burning, that's, uh, that's perfectly normal. Use the manipulators to solve this one. Okay, so I'm just going to use these just to hold the wire because I can just see it burning me. Okay, so that's that one soldered on. One side done successfully. Okay, so this one is the other way around. So the negative goes on the other side. Obviously, when you get these back together, it's always worth running a phase test and stuff just to make sure you do get it the right way around. Does myself sound weird if you get them wired back to front? There we go. So now inside we've got fatter wires with a direct signal path to the um, to the driver, and through the power of jump cuts, we'll put the rest of it back together. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, I've accidentally deleted the end of the, the video where I do the big reveal, and we have sold out of DT 1990s. So I can't even fake it and uh, show you in another set until we've got some in. So we'll just leave it at that. You've got the basics. You've seen how it's pulled apart and how we've modded them. It's, uh, it's, all, it's, not, it's not too difficult. It's the soldering the drivers is the main difficulty. Anyway, this is, uh, this is what they look like when they're back together. With a nice balanced cable. I think it really, really sets them off nicely. Anyway, uh, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments and hopefully I can answer them. Um, if you fancy seeing inside some different headphones, let me know. I might be able to <laughs> pull them apart, see if, see if we've always got something in. Uh, anyway, loving your work. Ciao.